Hurricane Zeta is hammering Louisiana's Gulf Coast. It made landfall Wednesday evening as a Category 2 hurricane with dangerous winds of 110 miles an hour. This is the view of Zeta from space. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station captured this video earlier as the storm rapidly gains speed and intensity over the ocean, churning up waves in the Gulf of Mexico as high as 50 feet tall. Danya Bacchus is in New Orleans with the latest. Hurricane Zeta slammed into the Louisiana coast as a strong Category 2 tonight and is now barreling through the state. Fierce winds already wreaking havoc in Grand Isle, where residents are under mandatory evacuation orders. Officials are warning of deadly storm surge as heavy rainfall floods streets. Louisiana has been hit by two tropical storms and two hurricanes already this year. This is not a drill. We've had many of them. We do expect directly impacting the city of New Orleans. Residents prepared by picking up sandbags today. You can't get tired of it. You just have to adjust yourself and this is, this is life down here in Louisiana. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards cautioning residents to expect extensive power outages during this fast moving storm, but said the lights would be back on in time to vote on Tuesday. We've identified in advance all of the polling locations uh, so that power restoration efforts can be prioritized there. This is expected to be a fast moving storm, but a far reaching one. Tropical storm warnings extend as far north as Virginia. In Atlanta, they have canceled in person classes. Wind gusts there are expected to reach 70 miles per hour. Lana? Tanya, thank you. For more on Zeta, let's bring in CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Biradelli. Jeff, what is the latest? So the storm's making landfall. It has already made landfall. It's right on top of New Orleans. In fact, it was really windy in New Orleans. Power went out in downtown. And now the system is right on top of them, so it's calm. They are in the calm eye of the storm. Now, when this storm was offshore, it produced 50-foot waves and a wind gust to 150 miles an hour on an oil platform. Now, that's above the ground. On the ground, close to shore, we've had reports of winds around 105 miles an hour. And also, a storm chaser way to the south of New Orleans said that a building just exploded right in front of him. Just to give you an idea of how powerful this storm is, it was rapidly intensifying when it made landfall. It was one mile an hour from being a Cat 3 storm. Storms that are intensifying when they make landfall always do a lot more damage than storms that are weakening, even if they have the same wind speeds because of that upward momentum, that inertia causes a lot more damage. So you can see where the storm is located right now, right on top of New Orleans. Strongest winds are on the eastern side, and as we head through the next couple hours, the strongest winds are going to be right along the coast of Mississippi because a lot of folks are exposed to the wind. We're going to see wind gusts over 100 miles an hour as the system continues to move to the north. So here are the latest stats from the storm. Again, it's right over New Orleans. Winds are 105 miles an hour, so it's weakened just a bit, but it's moving so fast. Typically, by the time a storm got this far inland, it'd be weakening a lot, but it's moving so fast and it had that upward momentum it was increasing its strength when it made its way on shore that it's going to carry its hurricane force winds way inland. So at least 50 miles inland, that is a problem. Let's take a look at the track that we expect. Look how fast it's moving. Uh, by the middle of the night overnight tonight, it's going to be already located near Birmingham. And then uh, as we head into Thursday afternoon, it's going to be right on top of Virginia near Richmond, Virginia. So that's how quickly this system is moving. And as it moves on shore, we've already had reports of five to six feet of storm surge. And in this area along the Mississippi coast around Biloxi, Waveland, uh, and Gulfport, around 7 to 11 feet of storm surge is possible with this storm. So, Jeff, I understand that Zeta actually went through something called, in, called rapid intensification, like a lot of storms this hurricane season. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means and how unusual it is? So, rapid intensification is when a storm uh, intensifies by 35 miles an hour in 24 hours. Now, that used to be somewhat rare. I mean, not rare. We'd see it a couple of times a, a, a season. We have seen that happen eight times this season already. That's not a record, but it's way up there. Uh, it's unusual. And the last five systems, all the Greek storms, have rapidly intensified at the end of the season. And for this one to rapidly intensify, I have to tell you, just looking at Twitter and all the meteorologists out there saying, 
wow, we could have never expected this to happen. Let's go through this and just show you as the system moves to the north, those wind gusts are going to stay really strong. Look at that, 80 mile an hour wind gusts in Birmingham. So when you have a rapidly intensifying storm that makes landfall, it carries those hurricane force winds uh, so far to the north and east. And believe it or not, Lana, this is something that's extremely interesting. First of all, some tornadoes are possible in, in the Carolinas, but look at that, a snowstorm will develop. So this is gonna turn into a snowstorm when it reaches the Catskills and the Berkshires, Vermont, New Hampshire, even Boston and New York City, a couple of snowflakes are possible with this system. So just to kind of show you this quickly, eight systems have rapidly intensified, uh, five of them in a row, we talked about that. Rapid intensification has increased three to four miles an hour per decade since 1980. So if you had a storm uh, you know, in 1980 with winds, let's say, of around 100 miles an hour and it rapidly intensified, it would then have winds of 135 miles an hour. Now, if you had a storm of, uh, of 100 miles an hour, it would likely have winds of 150 miles an hour. That makes a big difference. Those small increases in wind make a tremendous difference in, um, in the intensity of the storm and the damage it causes. And you can see that trend right there. Look at how many more storms, especially lately, have been rapidly intensifying. That's so interesting. I always learn so much from you. Um, Jeff, <laughs> let's talk just a little bit more about this historic hurricane season. You and I have, have marveled at it so much, but remind our viewers just some of the records that have been set in 2020. So the biggest record is we're at 27 named storms. Now, the record is 28, so we haven't broken it yet, but we are a whole month ahead of record pace. And believe it or not, in about seven days, we are likely to see another tropical storm form in the Southern Caribbean. That will be number 28. And then we have a whole month left in hurricane season. It ends at November 30th. And by the way, hurricanes don't stop because the calendar turns November 30th. You know, uh, hurricanes can, can occur in December even. And they have in the past, and they did in 2005. We're not hurricanes, but tropical systems are possible. So, so far we've had 11 systems make landfall. And we've had six hurricanes make landfall. Both of those are records. Five systems have made landfall on the Louisiana coast. That has never happened before. That's a record. And we talked about this, 27 named storms. The record is 28. We're likely to break that or at least tie it. Take a look across the Atlantic. And here's the reason. Water temperatures across the whole basin, literally the whole basin, are above normal. Since 1900, water temperatures have gone up in the Atlantic Ocean by two degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of this is human caused climate change. So notice everywhere you see the yellow, that's above normal. Where you see the blue, you barely find it, that's below normal. And these temperatures will continue to increase as we head into the future, as long as we keep warming the atmosphere. And I'll say it one more time, you know, you know the threshold for, for forming a hurricane is 80 degrees. So now we hit that threshold more often. 1950, it might've been 78 degrees. We just didn't get to the threshold. We just didn't form tropical systems. Now the threshold, now we reach the threshold more often and, and, more, and, and more parts of the basin and longer into the season as well because those warmer water temperatures last longer. All those reasons, we probably will end up seeing more hurricanes per season in the future and definitely more intense hurricanes in the future. All right, Jeff, thank you.